see the notes, by the way. I no, the notes. no, I can't. I don't. But I can Not hear you typing them. All right. I think we are live with Beastly Thoughts live episode. Shit, I forgot. One sixteen. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Hey, I'm really excited to announce this uh, new website. Uh, Got a hold of me through my DMs. Uh, They want to sponsor the show. It's called Gamble on Shit at BriarRabbit.net. I think it's going to be really exciting for us. I'm not affiliated with this at all. I'm just totally checking it out. Here's how you do it, right? Is you go in and you give them money. And then you feel good about yourself afterward. It's really yeah. awesome. I, re- I really think it's an awesome service. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Um, and I definitely want you to go check it out. So, again, it is uh, give me money at briarrabbit.net. <laughs> oh, shit. Scott's I fired. Just, I, wow. I just won $60. <laughs> well, you, that's the thing. You don't actually win money. You win love, right? You win, <laughs> you win <laughs> positive self-esteem. Uh, and great. it's a hundred percent win rate. Hundred percent win rate. <laughs> and again, Briar, I, I heard uh, you know the URL did have Briar. Is that yeah, Briar it, Rabbit? Oh no, it's totally, all? totally uh, un- uh, unaffiliated. Uh, I, I have no idea that. It's just a coincidence that they have my name in there. And they uh, again, the, the the website is called uh, Win with Briar at I swear to God this is legit dot net. <laughs> oh, I'm checking it out right now. Yo, yeah, you definitely want to check it out, man. Uh, we're we're gonna make a lot of people really happy with this. I mean, not that I'm affiliated with it, just something I heard about somebody who got a hold of me. Okay. Well, <laughs> now, now it does say uh, on the website at the very bottom left, uh, owned and affiliated by Briar Rabbit. Oh, that's, that's not d- different. It's different. I don't know if you guys know this. There's like a folk musician I think called Briar Rabbit. It's, it's oh yeah, different. it's a black different. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somehow he must be be involved. <laughs> wow. Well, you guys check out. Uh, what's the name of that URL again? Uh, Win shit. I, I'm pretty sure it's uh, uh, do awesome stuff with Briar online at this is completely legit <laughs> dot biz. <laughs> well, man, that is an incredible website. Right. The, the right. URL keeps Easy to remember. This. Easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> God, man, for for the people who don't know what Briar's talking about, <laughs> there's been a little bit of news in the ether about uh, YouTubers uh, sending their subscribers to websites that are under the guise of anonymity have nothing to do with the YouTuber, and the YouTuber ends yep. up actually owning right. the website. Yeah, that in our news. Yep, we'll talk about it. So. <laughs> All that money. So I'm happy to hear that you found a site that had nothing to do with you, and I, actually, actually, it was. 60 um, uh, emotion points that I won. And I feel more emotional and, and, and much better about myself after winning. You look better. I don't know. I, I think see. it's improved your complexion. I can't stop just smiling. You look, you look shinier <laughs> to me. I don't know. You just look brighter. You know, two <laughs> out of three doctors say that uh, lovebriar. Give him money. Uh, does actually <laughs> improve your time. complexion. Two out of three doctors agree. Wow. <laughs> Where did you Doctor. find these doctors? <laughs> Dr. BR and Dr. Briar are. <laughs> Again, I have no monetary no, relationship please. with this website. <laughs> just something I found. Just something while I was browsing around. I'm like, oh, uh, hey, this looks kind of cool. <laughs> uh, the title of the stream is wrong, by the way. We need to do, I fixed uh, it already. It. Refresh okay, your you. browser. It'll be fixed. Oh. Refresh everybody. I love you guys. <laughs> I had no fucking idea that was going to happen. <laughs> So oh, we got a lot man. to talk about today. There's lots of news, uh, but I want to hear about what you guys have been playing as well. Uh, Robbie, you want to kick it off with what you've been playing? Absolutely. So this week, I'm sure everybody knows this, but uh, a very, very special game became backwards compatible this week in the Xbox One. Yeah, did, have you been playing it? Yes, and that is Red Dead Redemption. And nice. holy shit, I still love that game to death. I have played it like nonstop since it came out. Mm-hmm. Love that game so much. Like just. Everything about it, the setting, the characters, the story, it's just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful game. It's like a Western GTA, but there's so much more to it than that. Man, I love this game. It holds up so, so well. It, it runs really well, does. too, on the Xbox One, right? Yep. And Did you still have your old copy good. or a disc copy? No, I had to buy it again, but it's only like $7.50. Like, absolutely worth it. This Did game you buy it good. online or at like a disc copy at like a retailer? Bought it on the, the Xbox, Xbox store. website. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So it's seven fifty if you buy a digital version. Yeah, heavily discount. Get, 
That's cool. And you can get the Game of the Year edition as well for, I think, ten fifty, which wow. includes the Undead Nightmare, uh, which is one of the best DLCs I've ever played. I'm going to pick this up because it's been forever since Me too. I played it. And, uh, like, I, I was watching, uh, is it Digital Foundry who does, like, the frame rate stuff? Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, they show how, how well a game runs. And it's, supposedly it runs much better than it did on the original Xbox 360, which you'd think it would be, like, yeah, no shit. It's much more powerful. But actually, because of, like, hardware and software compatibility uh, isn't necessarily the case for all backward compatible games on the Xbox One. Sure. Um, and it's it, it runs really well. It, like, it really sticks to a, 30, a consistent 30 frames per second uh, tr with small dips here and there. So, I, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying that, Robbie. You're having fun with it, huh? How far did you get? Oh. How many hours you put into it so far? 20, 25 hours in the last wow. two days. <laughs> it's been available since the 8th, and you've put in a, a full day. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday I played eight did straight you... hours, I think, until the very end of the game, and I just love it so much, man. <laughs> Now, yeah. You guys don't know. Robbie first. goes hard. He goes hard. He, <laughs> the, guys, yeah. the guys who watch the show have no idea about the uh, changes that he's been making to his living arrangement. I heard that he was having a special toilet installed in his bedroom <laughs> with a refrigerator on the side of it so that he's able to do everything. And he has a pillow on the back. Have you ever and seen Idiocracy? Have you ever seen Idiocracy with... Uh, the guy's got like this big ass TV. He's got like a Barca lounger in front of the TV, and the thing has got a toilet in the middle of the Barca lounger and a fridge underneath. Yeah. <laughs> you literally never have to move. <laughs> so, how much of that did you actually get installed, Robbie? Because I know it takes some real dedication to get twenty hours in within you know forty eight hours of a game. What do you mean installed? The, is the toilet in your room right now, or the refrigerator? Oh, oh, oh my <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, no, there's a full toilet, there's a coffee machine that also dispenses pizza, which is handy, and, you know, <laughs> and that's that's awesome. that is handy. I, I, I the Ikea made this shit. <laughs> and there's a second switch for, uh, Are you telling me I can get well, coffee so. and pizza in one, in one machine? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> I no, love it. That's great, man. Living the life. So, all right, so that's an old game, right? It's Xbox 360. It's been upgraded for Xbox One. Still look good? Still play good? Like, I was surprised because I haven't played this game in about six years since it came out, maybe a little after that, years. and wow. it holds up well. Like, I'm yeah. shocked how good it looks for a six-year-old game running on a 360. Like, It looks surprisingly really good. Great. Yeah, I'm really impressed by it. Nice. So good. What else so, have you been playing? So that's um, it. Yeah, I don't have time random. to play anything else. <laughs> yeah, just Red Dead Redemption. No, I've also been playing Counter Strike Go on PC because that's kind of my obsession lately, and it's a lot of fun. Even though people are ape shit at that game too, like holy crap, people are good at it. But it's a ton of fun, and yeah, I love it. Nice, Beastly. What have you been yeah. up to? Oh uh, well, this week I've been slowly watching the the country fall apart. So it's been a little hard for me to stay totally focused on gaming, but. It watching the world's worst president presidential nominees and, and and mass shootings i did get a little bit of time to uh to play a few games i actually bought some indies on the playstation store i bought a game called shantae which is a, a 2d side scroller in the vein of games like Mega Man. and i've heard some pretty good things about this game it's it's a very similar to a 16-bit style of graphics and whatnot, uh, but it is pretty difficult. It's kind of like the Mega Man series. I haven't really got into it. I played enough to make a few videos with it yesterday. I also played uh, Get Out of Hell, which was available free through PlayStation Plus, which was the DLC. You know what I'm talking about, Robbie? Yep, for Saints Row 4. A lot Saints of Row 4, uh, and I never actually had the opportunity to play that. Uh, it's a it's a very satanic game, <laughs> which really caught me off guard. There's a lot of satanic shit going on, but you have some really awesome satanic powers in the game. I also got a chance to, for the first time, get into uh, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. I've been kind of going through my back catalog, and uh, I've been doing lots of reviews, and I decided that this week, you know, in the midst of the country falling apart and whatnot, that I would just take a few hours per day and just try something new. And I, I tried out Plants vs. Zombies, and to my complete amazement, the game is phenomenal. Uh, Very fun. Had no clue, had no clue that it would translate so well from the traditional side scroller original of Plants vs. Zombies into this third person type of experience that you can play with other people. It's mm -hmm. really been awesome. I also uh, spent spent a few hours with my brothers uh, playing some Last of Us, and uh, I haven't played The Last of Us in a few months. What? Uh, and uh, no. yes, I mean the. 
the country is falling apart, Robbie. Uh, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to to <laughs> play the last of us in a few months. Yeah. yeah, it definitely does. Uh, but I, I still am the man in that game, so it made me feel pretty good. And other than that, uh, that's really about it. I've had a lot of fun playing these games, uh, and I look forward to digging in deep this week and, and, and dedicating myself to uh, doing another review. I'm actually going to do a video to let my subscribers decide which game I should play and complete next through my Xbox One and my PlayStation 4 library. It's going to be an awesome video. I also, uh, I also rendered 10 new videos last night. Whoa, so it's been, damn. Yes, it's been, a, it's been a, a busy week, uh, but that has been my week. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Awesome. I've obviously been playing a lot of Destiny. I did pick up Uncharted 4 again. I'm really digging Uncharted 4. I talked yes. about that a lot last about that a lot last week, so I'm not going to get too into it. Uh, today, uh, or yesterday, I played a lot of uh, Trials of Osiris, which I'm absolutely, you know, I'm in love with that game mode. I think that is going to be something that we see uh, plucked out of Destiny and brought into other games. Uh, the way you can play competitively and kind of keep ramping up uh, to tougher and tougher opponents as you go is just so genius. And the way there's loot rewards as you go and the further you get, the better the loot you get. You know, I just find that to be so addicting and so much fun and having a small team of three players working together. You know, it's just so much fun. So I'm really, I'm really enjoying Trials of Osiris, even a year later, you know. Uh, so I, Destiny, uh, Uncharted 4, that's what I'm really kind of working on right now. Awesome. Awesome. I uh, also didn't mention uh, that I have bought a few games recently, a few new games that uh, one of them I haven't even had a chance to play. I, I did get Homefront Revolution, the Revolution. Haven't even seen the introduction to that, but I oh, did. Oh, right. Two? That's the second one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I've heard it's really bad. Yeah, well, uh, sorry. Con continuing with that trend, another game that I do own now, which maybe I shouldn't have, have owned, is the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games uh, made by Platinum. You got, like, uh, money just, burning a hole in your pocket? What's going on here? Buying these games? Just, You're making yeah. some pretty just, rough decisions here, Beasley. <laughs> well, some questionable purchases. <laughs> yeah. the, the thing is, right, um, th this is my, my thing, right? I, I got the Turtles, even though I knew it was a, I heard it was a bad game, just to see how bad it was. Uh-huh. And, and now I own it, and I played, like, the first 20 minutes, and yeah. it's it's pretty true. Have you ever it's heard pretty... of uh, rental? Uh, this, this theory where you can rent a video game? Pay like four or five dollars for it, and you don't actually have to pay the full price of owning it. And you can experience the shittiness, but then you get to return the shittiness to a retailer near you. Throw that yeah, shit well, that right back. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I do understand the premise, right? But uh -huh. being the, the kind of gamer I am, if I do have a few extra bucks, you know, I buy my wife all the G strings she wants, and whatever's left, I get to spend. Mm. G strings, um, but luck, you yeah. know, they are about as expensive as you expect them to be, you know, with very little material. Very little money. You can buy quite a few yeah. of them. I got, it looked like Santa Claus. I had a whole bag of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a weird picture in my mind right now. And, you know, that was back when, that was back when the beer was really thick. Of Santa Claus. But I bought Quantum Break, and that was the game I really should have rented, to be totally honest. And uh, I didn't rent it. And so... After that, I was like, well, you know, if I'm going to bite the bullet for this crappy shit, I might as well for Turtles. At least there was something about the Ninja Turtles that I actually liked in the past. Uh -huh. And um, I actually did enjoy the first Homefront game. I thought it was a good game. I just thought it looked like shit. And so I still haven't played it. Uh, I've heard some people say it was a decent game. Some people say it was crap. So I'm not expecting it to be anything more than that. And when the time comes, I'll get around to playing it. But, yeah, there are some games in there. I still haven't played Far Cry Primal, Briar. <sighs> Not once. Mm -hmm. I think I played like three minutes to the you tutorial. Up, I shot a deer. Up playing the Witcher, shot a deer right? and I turned it off. So. Oh, okay. You ended up playing The Witcher, right? Oh. I played probably about 10, 10 to 15. Yeah, I did. Okay. I played, but I didn't beat it, right? I didn't beat it. I played about 10 to 15 hours, and then I started playing The Last of Us, and while I was doing that, my wife continued with The Witcher, and a few days later, she looked over at me and said, hey, bitch, I'm done with the game. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> hey, bitch, I'm done with the game. Me. Just like that. <laughs> you know, Kate, guys, she doesn't play when it's time to beat a game. But of course, she wouldn't call me a bitch. She knows I'm her bitch anyway. Yeah, right. It's called. It's, it's called it goes unsaid. <laughs> yes. uh, but 
Yeah, uh, she beat the game, and I just never got around to it. And so that's actually one of the games I'm asking my subscribers if they'd like me to go back in, beat, and do an in-depth review. I'm hoping that they pick Metal Gear, and I'm ho I mean, I'll, there's also a slew of games on my Xbox One that I haven't had a chance to play either. So that video will be up this week, and hopefully you guys do me better than you did with the fucking baby names. <laughs> yeah. Dick Damn. Triple. I think Damn. that was a pretty good name. I think there might have been some a... shenanigans in the voting process. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah. But like I did I say, like... it was a binding c contract. Uh... <laughs> some There's nothing, dickish I, nothing I could do about it. Yes. I, got so, I got so many comments based on that video. People tell me, Beasley, have you tried you know, this name? Anal Probe? I mean, I'm like, God damn it. What happened to just I don't Jacob know the King of Beeslow has uh, a certain amount of flow to it, you know? Like, all caps, yeah, too. Funny. I like the all caps. <laughs> yeah. What if it's a girl, Briar? I think we could, make, we, could, we could make some small concession to the Queen of Beeslow, right? <laughs> okay, I'll ride with that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Look, you know, why you got to put everything, like, gender-specific now? You don't, you don't know how that girl's going to turn out. <laughs> it's a brave new world you know out here, Beastly. <laughs> could have the frame of a man. You don't know. <laughs> well, she's gonna have a lot of trouble. <laughs> she has the frame of a man and and the the, the actual uh, tenderloins of a female. Okay. She's so, taking Beastly uh, the Beastly name to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Oh my god. <laughs> we got any news aside from uh, Beastly's? Child's name. You got any news? <laughs> no, we can just talk about Beastly's child. For I, I'm yeah, happy I mean, to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I didn't know about this news, but it does sound interesting. Footage of canceled Call of Duty Roman Wars emerges online. The game was in development in 2008 at Vicarious Visions, but never got past the prototype stage. Did you guys see I, this? No, I didn't hear Did about this. So. Apparently, back in 2008, this is when, you know, just after Call of Duty 4, Call of Duty was starting to become really popular. Apparently, yeah. Activision was looking at their studios and trying to make them come up with a new idea for Call of Duty. Yeah. So, basically, what people want is new, fresh ideas. And this is basically a Call of Duty game that has literally rise out of Rome. Like, it's not nothing like Call of Duty. Oh, it's I did hear about that. Game. No kidding. Yeah, it's weird. So, it's not yeah. even a first-person shooter? No, it's a third-person action game set in ancient Rome. You have like, like your sword and shield. It's literally Rise Son of Rome. Wow! And with the Call of Duty name on it, this was just what they pitched, and yeah. So they prototyped it. So there is a prototype somewhere. Yeah, there's a prototype online. You can go look at the footage. Like it no definitely kidding. doesn't look like anything like Call of Duty. It's just like just create something crazy. Let's put the Call of Duty name on it. See if it'll work. <laughs> yeah, and apparently never got oh, off the ground. Huh. It's like a, a new first-person shooter coming out. It's called God of War. Right? Yeah. Basically, yes. <laughs> it's like the other way around. You know, whether or not these things work or not, in the end, it does benefit the gamer. Uh, there, There's a slew of people out there creating games, and, and they're using the deepest, sometimes darkest parts of their imagination to come up with something engaging. Well, and sometimes in their imagination. Some, yes, balls. <laughs> balls deep. Uh, sometimes uh, it, it falls flat, but for the most, well, I won't even say for the most part, for the ones that do matter and the ones that do work, it, it sometimes changes the whole paradigm and opens up a whole new experience for the gamer. And so, yeah. I, Call of I, Duty I, 4 was very much that game, you know? Yes. Game changing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so, so moving on past Call of Duty or uh, Rise, Son of Rome, Duty. A new patent suggested Sony could be creating an adapter for PC uh, for use with the DualShock 4. That so, cool. why would they need an adapter, though? It already plugs right into the PC. Well, just go, it's wireless, I think is the point. A uh, USB <laughs> dongle? Huh. But it, can't you already get it to work with, with, I believe with you software? Can. Yeah, you can yes. use software. Maybe but this is not just an easier supported. solution. Yeah, it's yeah not, this would be like not. natively supported this way. So it'd be like right a game controller not. that you plug in. You know, it'd be like a probably USB dongle. Is that what you're thinking? That it's a you dongle, plug in, yeah. and then you know, Boom. then it it shows up in Windows and just has like support. That'd be great because I I like the yeah. DualShock Four. Uh, I I really want them to take a look at the durability of it, but hopefully it'll last. Yeah, it won't just yeah. fall apart. <laughs> but that's cool, man. That's that's nice because I I prefer mm. the DualShock Four over the Xbox One controller. 
I don't know about that, Briar. Uh, I'm I'm starting to. I think the winds are changing now. As far as when you first got the the first PlayStation Four controller out of the box, yeah. versus the Xbox One controller out of the box, yeah. The feel of the PlayStation DualShock Four is so good. It's like you should have been born with one in your hand. Okay. Mm-hmm. I feel, sometimes it feels better to hold that than it does to pull out and piss. It feels so natural. Okay. Uh, All right. Like that, but after a while, the, the DualShock 4 starts to kind of wear and, and, and the tear becomes evident. Yeah. And it makes me feel like it's less of a quality uh, piece of heart. It, uh, it I just completely feels... agree. Yeah. And so now, like when I play my Xbox One games on my PC, my Windows 10 PC, glorious, glorious. There's beautiful people on my Windows 10 PC. Hi, guys. Hi. It's PC Hi. Master Race. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I'm one too. Uh, whenever I'm playing games on this thing, uh, I use my Xbox One controller. And, and in my mind, it just somehow makes more sense to me. I don't want that 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 DualShock 4 that I have. It looks like it came out of a vampire's ass. All the control the buttons are all scraped away and yeah. the analogs are half bitten off. Look like you threw it into a shark bed. And my, my Xbox One controller still are just perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. I still have and my it, day one controller it still works. Yeah, you know, it literally says day one on it, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And it still works perfectly. Um I can't say the same about PlayStation controllers. Of course I use them more. And you know, I had 360 controllers wear out, but it took a year to wear out, right? It took a, yeah. and that was constant play on Call constant of Duty. Use. Yeah, constant play. Uh, PlayStation Four controllers can wear out much faster. Like I've, I've well, yeah. they've gotten check better since launch. They have gotten better since launch, um, but they still have issues. I, I, I don't know, Brian. I have a, a PlayStation DualShock Four controller in my living room, sitting yeah. right behind my Nathan Drake figure. It's white. You guys know I like them white. But this thing won't charge. It completely has no ability to charge. I haven't tried taking it back. The frustration just mounted. Uh, I, 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 I ran into that too. Uh, fresh out of the box, it would Straight not charge. Straight out of it won't charge. And you know really? what I found out actually was the problem. Well, I don't know if I could say this. I switched out the USB cord that I was trying to charge it with, and it would charge. Um, yeah, I've, I've that USB like cord, the USB cord was charging other controllers fine. So I don't know what the deal was with this USB cord and this one controller, but it did end up charging, and now I can use it. This blue one, I opened it up, and it just wouldn't charge. Uh, but when I switched out the USB the cord, it did charge. Okay, well, I'm That's going to try that, but I got to say, you did kind of scare me when you first came with the revela- revelation that you knew what the problem was, because I know I paid my power bill. I thought you were going to say, first, you got to make sure you got to... What you got to do is pay no. the power bill. <laughs> what you guys got to do is save money and come to Canada. <laughs> yeah. Make right? smart financial decisions, save your money, come up here. All uh, of you. Oh, man, I, I may just do that. I, yeah, I can't listen to four years of this. We're going to work hard for our American people, our champions. Make America great again. Let's build a wall. No. <laughs> No. Robbie's fantastic. He's just fantastic. <laughs> uh, all right. So, <laughs> continuing on, man. Hey, that's a hard fight. You guys, let us know in the comments who who you with, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. No, it's, please it's don't. One. Please don't even start just, that shit in my comments. It's it's too late. <laughs> Let's not get into political <laughs> discussions in the comments. All right. So I might, I might just <laughs> turn off comments. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo has filed several new patents for a new handheld device likely related to the upcoming NX console. Uh, you, would you like to elaborate, my young Padawan? That would be me? Yes. Okay. You ever seen uh, Star Wars? Uh, well, basically, yes, I have. Well, All right, then. I, I'd be shocked if there was someone who hadn't seen Star Wars. but uh, Just do it. Yeah, anyways, there's new images of, like, this weird one screen device kind of like the ones we saw before where it was like the freeform thing uh this must be nx related it doesn't explicitly say it's for nx or upcoming hardware but it definitely looks like it i mean it's similar to what we've seen before but it's like an actual handheld it looks pretty simple to me nintendo is really frustrating me they they make more uh patents than they do make actual hardware it's like 500 patents to one piece of hardware we got a console that's supposed to be coming out in just a few months that no one's even seen. Yeah, uh, we just, haven't seen it, and it's coming out it's, in less, what, six months? Like, we have to see this thing now. It's nice. I, I, it, it's, it would seem that way, but I don't know what Nintendo's doing. Maybe they're like, uh, we're going to drop this shit like a Beyonce album. Boom! Uh, you, and gotta, you gotta imagine that Nintendo's a little bit back on their heels, right? Is They were thinking they were going to come out with a new console that was going to mm-hmm. be as powerful as the Xbox One and PS4. They were going to finally have parity. And as they're leading out, 
to release this console, PS4 and Xbox One are like, check out this new shit. Scorpio. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's Scorpio. Like, oh, shit. Neo. And Nintendo's like, ah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, I think you're running the money with that. Yeah, I agree. I think that's what it is. It has to be really, really <clears throat> scary. It has to, that's a really yeah. rough situation to be put in. I, I think but, I think PlayStation, that's why we didn't hear about PlayStation, because they heard the Scorp- about the Scorpio, and they did not want to have the Scorpio and the and the Neo like kind of share in the stage is you know that that's scary I think for everybody but Microsoft Microsoft is like sitting pretty pretty over there with that with that Scorpio coming out next year and uh well I I don't know man these announcements sometimes can backfire I was reading an article yesterday it's not in our news but how Microsoft may have effectively killed their Xbox One sales yeah not yeah. not not because of the Scorpio revelation, but because of their Play Anywhere initiative. Now, the reason what they're saying is people who have Windows 10 PCs or you know capable of playing these games that come out from Microsoft Studios games, they have literally no reason to buy an Xbox One at this point. And if they want a Scorpio, they can buy that, which basically negates any need for the Xbox One when you can play all their exclusives on PC. Yeah, but that's Microsoft- great. That's great for Microsoft, and that's great for gamers. Just because they're not selling Xbox Ones doesn't make mean that Microsoft's not making money, right? Is they're making money off the licensing? They're making money because the games are selling. Yeah, Software. and ex- yeah. yeah, it's given it's given consumers a choice. Where do I want to play this game? Maybe I'm a big PC gamer. Maybe I don't have a lot of money for a PC. Maybe I prefer to play games on my couch. You know, however oh. you want to play it, that's great. I think it's a I think it's a great campaign. I think it's gonna in the long run be great for Microsoft. Uh, just because it may, I don't really think it's probably uh, denting their sales either on the Xbox One. I think that's probably some uh, pretty flaky math that they're doing if they're reporting that it is. Because people who are going to be playing these games on on PC anyway, we're going to buy an Xbox One, right? Yeah. Like P- PC well, gamers well, don't play console games. Well, that's not true. Some people play everything, well, but. This, this is what I think, right? I think that right now, if every exclusive from Microsoft and Sony was available on PC, there wouldn't be 40 million PS4 sold. And there no, man, people can't million. afford high-end gaming PCs. That's the problem. It's, but To get a high-end gaming PC, you got to spend a lot much more money than you do on a PS4. Oh, yeah. Or an Xbox One. Like, a lot more. It's a yeah, big well, investment. But I believe that there's still some budget PCs out there. You can spend five, $600, and you'll have a, a gaming PC, a PC that's capable of playing that's still double you know, the price of a ps4 yeah it's still a pc though you know there's a lot more you can do with your pc it's not gonna you last can... you as long though i feel like you have to upgrade it sooner because it's just not going to be as capable for gaming yeah i, I mean I, I like I, 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 I don't want to see consoles go away i'll be honest with you i like buying into a console generation putting absolutely. in a putting up installing a box in my living room or you know wherever it's going to be and knowing that whatever game i buy for it is just going to work optimally i don't have to worry about drivers i don't have to worry about you know like uh inputs i I don't have to worry about any of it i can just start playing the game and relax i was a pc gamer for a long time now i think pc gaming has evolved it's gotten better than it was when i was when i was doing a lot of it but i found it infuriating to buy a game uh and then have to go online and yeah try and figure out why why is you know why is why can't I access the settings? Why is my mouse not working on this game? Why, you know, why does the video, you know, like why is only the bottom half of the video showing up in, in Quake Three Arena? Like what, what's going on with like my video card, my motherboard, uh, you know, like why, why is it not working in my specific setup? With a PS4, I don't have to do that. You know, I just slide in the disc and or download it, and it just works because there's only one piece of hardware that this game was designed to run on, and I just run it. You know, so I don't want to see. I'd like to see consoles get more powerful, but I don't. I don't love the idea of PC gaming because it's just a pain in the fucking ass. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to. I don't want to upgrade graphics cards every year for seven hundred dollars. You know, like it's just not. It's not the kind of thing as a hobbyist i remember enjoying that stuff as an adult i'd rather spend my time actually playing the game as opposed to upgrading find my pc you know yeah. rather you rather play it than find the best way to play it yeah i i i 100 agree with you there i'm a console gamer to the core you know i bought a gaming pc just for the the option right mm-hmm. but for me it's still 
leaves that door open for people who may be into this thing for exclusives, who may be that person who who's willing to buy a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One for a game like Bloodborne or yeah. Uncharted, right? Yeah. They hear about games like this that are amazing, and they're like, holy shit, I, I, I got to bite the bullet, I got to buy the console. But if Sony or you know was to release that on PC, it would remove that. Sony's need not going to do that though. Sony is a totally different position than Microsoft is. So that Microsoft has the Windows 10 operating system. They want to promote their Windows 10 store, so they have all these different reasons to make these things cross you know cross compatible to release them yeah, on I both. Think it's good. Sony has no reason to release them on PC. They're trying to sell a PlayStation 4. They're trying to build an ecosystem. They don't have a reason to do that. So yeah, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. I totally agree with you. I don't want to get those lines crossed. Yeah. What I'm saying is Microsoft's move, I, b I believe, honestly, in my heart, that it's very possible it could slow down sales for their hardware. Are they making money in other avenues? Absolutely. Are they going to focus more pre predominantly on the uh, software aspect of gaming? Possibly. But when they make these consoles and they want to move these consoles, they're making the Xbox One S for a reason, but at the same time, they're saying... If you have a PC that's capable, you don't need to buy this thing. I think that it's, counter, it's counterproductive to the message. If they're making new consoles, but they're also making ways for people to play without the console. No, they're just giving I us think, more options. I don't think it's counterproductive at all. I like this move by Microsoft. I think it's very smart. The, depending on how you want to play your games, they're giving you that option. I think that's really smart on Microsoft. I think it is smart. They're, they're selling PCs. They're selling Windows 10. And if, if you don't want to play... You know, games on your PC. You know, you don't feel like you're that kind of person. That's fine, man. We got the Scorpio coming out for you too, and you're gonna have yep. a, a nearly PC experience in your living room that hooks up to your TV. You know, that's ultimately, great. ultimately, it's a win for Microsoft either way. But I equate, I always equate it for some reason to food. Figure that out. It would be like me opening my own restaurant, and I make the world like some of the best cakes in Georgia, and I got all these people coming in to buy these cakes because they can get them from me. And then after I make enough money, or I think I'm, I've made enough money, I say, you know what? Now you can buy my recipe and go home, and you never have to come back and do it here. You can just, nah, man, you can it's more like this. Now we're going to franchise out the cakes. Now you're going to be able yeah. to buy the cakes here and here and here and here. So now you're making double the money because you – you, you got the cake selling at your own restaurant, but you also got the cake selling at this restaurant, at this restaurant. So all that money's still coming back to you, but now consumers have more places to buy the cakes. So yeah, ultimate, 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 ultimately, I guess it's a gamble. Are, are we going to make more money on software or is the hardware going to They always matter? make money it's, on software, right? You, you never absolutely. make money on hardware. You make it on the software. The hard, You try and sell the hardware so that you have a bigger available base of customers who will buy the software. But you, buy, you make your money off software licenses. Those little, those little Xbox seals of approval, those little PlayStation seals of approval, that's how you make your money. 100%. Yeah, but, I, but see, as a console gamer, too, I just feel like the lack of an exclusive on a console ultimately, well, there's no need for it. I just I think that consoles on a mm -hmm. on an exclusive level they need to have some that you can only play on the console, even if it's one or two. I, I you know I, I don't see why I don't like I don't understand how this hurts you right? Is I don't understand it, how I never said it, I never said it did. Well, why why I, do you I, want it to be a console exclusive then? I, I believe as as far as business goes, if they want their console business to thrive, they've got to give people a reason to go to the console. I'm talking about well, if, business. If you're a console gamer, there is a reason. If you're a PC gamer, you're also you're. They're giving consumers an option. They're giving consumers the choice. They don't really care if the console sells or if Windows PC sells, right? They're they're that's getting a bad the money. message to me. That's to me. That's a bad message. It's, me, I think you're just stuck in an old way of thinking then because this is this is it a, might be. This is a net gain for consumers and for Microsoft. And, and I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm always open to learn new things and, and try to yeah. evolve as a gamer every every fucking day. But I just feel like if you make a console, you got to you got to put it all in on that console. The important thing your, is your it's still say, a Microsoft. Is <clears throat> it's still a Microsoft exclusive. That's the important thing, right? Is it's not going over to Sony. It's not going over to Mac, right? That's the important thing to Microsoft is that you still got to buy, you still got to buy Windows 10 or you still got to buy an Xbox to play this game, right? That's the and, important and to, thing. And to, be, and to be totally clear, I love it. I love the fact that I can play these games on my PC for the price of one game. To yeah, me, that's yeah. amazing. I, I love it. But it just, it was kind of confusing to me and I might be wrong. I probably am. You know, I'm very seldom right about a lot of things, but I just felt like, if I'm making a console, I want you to get this console, and here are the reasons why you need to get it. 
because there's always going to be a fringe group of people who are always on the fence. There's, there are people right now who do have PCs that are capable of playing PlayStation 4 and Xbox One quality games. And the fact that some of these Xbox One games are coming to PC now is going to negate the possibility of them buying an Xbox One. What if it was just one game that they wanted on the Xbox One and they were willing to buy the console for that? But that's fucking and great. Been- that's great. That's the beauty of it. That's like the best part of it. Look, if I'm a PC gamer... I don't want to go buy an Xbox. I have no interest in buying an Xbox, yeah. right? I prefer to play games in front of my PC. Maybe even I have a PC hooked up to my to my TV in the living room, you know, but that's how that's I how like I to it, play yeah. PCs. I like to, you know, upgrade my graphics card. I like to kind of soup up my PC. I like to get the best possible frame rate. You know, I like playing on PC. I don't want to buy an Xbox. I don't like using a controller. I like using mouse and keyboard, you know? So that's great. So it's great. You're still selling me the game that I want to play, but I don't have to go out and spend $300 on an Xbox One. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's I mean that's it's it's, it's a really win win. It's weird for me because I from the consumer standpoint I love it, right? Yeah. But from the business but from the business standpoint, it's just weird to me. Well you gotta and look at how they make money. They make money off the software sales. Yeah. Absolutely. We love to hear what you guys think about yeah. this debate. Because you know, everybody's not gonna agree, everybody's not gonna say the exact same thing. But I feel like there is room for a discussion here. So you guys let us know what you think in the comments below. Mr. Can Robbie Stone. Yes, please. No. Nah. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> screw it off. <laughs> uh, I was going to add, I agree with, both, I agree with both of you guys in several different points. I think I agree with you a little more, Briar, on the fact that Microsoft, they have this ecosystem, right? Like they want to build Xbox and PC. I think what they're doing is they're future proofing that brand of where those two are going to sit together. So PC players and Xbox players play together. I think it is about the software sales and it's a Microsoft exclusive. Like that's what's important for them. And I don't think people are going to be too upset, especially PC players. Like, exactly. I don't think they're going to be upset about having their so-called exclusive also be on the Xbox One. I don't think that's a big deal. So, yeah. yeah All right. Well, what's the next story? Robbie, give it to us. Give it to us hard, uh, Robbie. I'll give, give it to you, baby. Yeah, yeah. Put it going balls deep. I'll give it to you. You ready? <laughs> you ready? Yeah, Brian. <laughs> <Ryan. laughs> yeah, Brian, you're doing it. Yeah. Bank and bounce. Uh, YouTuber, YouTubers, T. Martin and uh, Pro Syndicate have been involved in a betting scandal with a website they own called CSGO Lotto. Really? I you haven't guys heard. May have heard about no, this. I haven't heard of this. Yeah. This is strange. <laughs> what? Somehow it, it, it seems very, very familiar. <laughs> Man, it's like I, I heard about this a half an hour ago, but it it's wasn't the same. Briar, give me money. dot com. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's it's no, Briar, give Briar money. dot biz is nothing like this at all. Oh, give Briar money, not Briar. Give me money. Gotcha. So I don't earn money myself for being on your website. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Send Briar to Vegas. dot com. Dot net is a completely. <laughs> Completely, completely different does. story. <laughs> How the fuck are you coming up with these websites? <laughs> Dot go? Oh, man. Oh, so, man. Go ahead. So, I'm not into the CSGO uh, uh, arena the way that you are, Robbie. I do know quite a bit about this story, but I'm sure that you'd probably be the best person to, do to, to tell our viewers about it. So, go ahead. Go. CS, go. Like... I guess Robbie said, uh, yeah, I don't know. So basically what happened about. was T. Martin person. Yeah. Robbie's lagging out a little bit. So I'm just okay, going to, I'm going to mm-hmm. briefly talk mm-hmm. about the stories that uh, essentially there was, yeah. there were a couple of, uh, well, actually three YouTubers, three very famous YouTubers. Yeah. That's, Robbie, you're uh, lagging out really bad. We can't wait. understand you. You're just a robotic it's, voice. If you could, maybe if you restart your connection, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so there's three three famous YouTubers started a website. Uh, the website is basically you can gamble skins, which are worth money, from CSGO uh, in the kind of a lottery system. They promoted this website. Uh, they did not disclose that they owned it. And, uh, you know, obviously it caused a big controversy, there. right? Uh, I also think it's it's odd that they were, comp- they were using the website while they were making videos against, you know, users of the website. Uh, they were actually gambling on their own gambling website, which they controlled. Yeah, they controlled. They could make <laughs> themselves win. Right. It, yeah, so I think insane. that was part of it. But uh, it's 
pretty fucking shady. You know, like the whole situation is pretty fucking shady. And I would I would say this. If you're an up-and-coming YouTuber or Twitch streamer and you're thinking about doing a sponsorship, honesty is the best policy. Absolutely. Anytime you have an opportunity to make some money, honesty is the best policy here, <laughs> right? It's like if you think that maybe your viewers would like to know about this, just let them know. Let them know. You know, and that goes for anything as far as sponsorship. Sometimes companies will send you things to review, things to give away. Make sure you, you disclose all the information. What T. Martin and, and uh, Pro Syndicate did here was totally under... It was the worst kind of scandal you could do, yeah. uh, being a YouTube personality or a Twitch streamer. The people who, who watch your videos rely on you to be truthful and honest with them. And breaking that bond and breaking that trust, honestly, will destroy your reputation fully uh, on something that you've worked... And, and as far as T. Martin, I know he's been doing it for years. Yeah. Years to build. And then you turn around and you backstab so many people who've you know, grown accustomed to supporting you by watching your videos. It's really unsavory. This it would appear that happens. what they've done is illegal, too. Uh, they're getting Absolutely. sued for sure, and it looks like the FCC may be looking in at it as well. Yeah. Um, you I know, mean, There are laws in place for uh, YouTubers and Twitch streamers promoting things. It's, you are supposed to... Disclose you, it. You are supposed to disclose if it's a, you know, a paid advertisement. And, I mean, yeah. this... Certainly is that. <laughs> you know, like, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know what these so, guys were thinking. I don't know what they were thinking. Well, well, time will tell what happens here. You know, um, hopefully justice prevails. Uh, and, and for anyone who's been disenfranchised by this kind of swindling, people who've lost their money on this website, I'd be extremely pissed. And I'd be so mad at people who I honestly like. You know, if you're watching these guys' videos and yeah. you're believing them, going to a website that they're promoting on their YouTube channel, I remember the video that T-Mart did where he said, I just went and, and goofed around and made 60 bucks like lickety split. That's going to send your viewers straight to that website. Yeah. And they're going to be, you know, uh, waging their own funds against a system that's rigged against them. So I guess what time will I, what tell I what found particularly appalling about this story, and I don't want to talk about it for too much. Yeah. I, I don't know these guys, but T-Martin did like an apology video and he's in this fucking mansion. <laughs> Like, I mean, it has got to be several million dollar house. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious, dude? You might want to tone back on this a little bit. <laughs> I would have did it at fucking Walmart. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, you know, when you get so oh, big, shit. it's hard for you to, to relate to the small guy. Yeah, I guess Time so. will tell, guys. Yeah. All right, so uh, this might be exciting for people who don't know why they're excited for games. No Man's Sky has gone gold. Development on the game has finished. And it will launch for PlayStation 4 and PC on August 9th. August 9th, We're baby. Man, that's less than a week, a month away. Yeah, yeah. I am uh, super hyped for this game. I don't even know why. I don't know why. I don't even know point. if I'm going to have any fun playing it. Me too. <laughs> so exciting. I know. You know. This is exciting to be excited about things you have no idea you're excited about. Well, okay. So uh, when I first started playing Destiny, one of the most appealing things about the game was that I had no idea what I was going to confront in this game, right? I didn't know what kind of gear I was going to get. I didn't know where, where I would be going. It was all fresh, all brand new. This game looks like it's going to be very much that. It's like, I don't, I'm going to boot that game up. I don't know what my goal is. I don't know what I'm trying to get done. I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm hoping it's going to be fun because if it is, it's going to be magnificent, man. Like it's, the it's tech a one involved in this. Yeah. The tech is the, the most amazing part. I've heard, and that's really, I think, that the gateway that got everybody excited. Nothing like this has ever been, uh, you know, attempted before. Yeah. But from what from what I under, understood from a developer interview, uh, is that the the premise of the game is to get to the center of the galaxy. Uh huh. You're you're actually on this long, drawn out mission. You're going through heaven and hell to get to the center of the galaxy for I don't know what's there. Maybe like the the very first McDonald's. I don't know. But uh, it sounds like it's going to be exciting. Hopefully it is. You know, this is one of those situations where I haven't seen enough uh, to really get me 100% in. But what I have seen is truly exciting yeah. to be able to run around on a fucking planet. Uh, I, don't know if there, I don't know if it's true or not that there's no multiplayer in this game. Uh, but if that's the case... I thought the whole the game, game was multiplayer. I thought that there wasn't. Uh, welcome back, Robbie. We froze you, you in time. Now, a quick question for you, because you might know definitively, does No Man's Sky have multiplayer? 
Uh, well, of course, yeah. I mean, it's all about playing with friends and stuff like that and exploring planets, I believe. Okay, I, I don't I know if you'll be something. playing with friends, so here, here's how I understand it. Is that the game is essentially a multiplayer game. Is that, you know, the universe you share, you know, people will share their universe. But if I <laughs> log in and Beastly logs in and Robbie logs in, we may never fucking see each other in this yeah. game. It's okay, essentially true. a single-player game Could played journey, in a basically. massively yeah. multiplayer world. That but we may spawn cool. in to the game and so far apart that we never get together. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, okay. I thought your house was haunted, Robbie. Um, no, it's a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of scary movies coming out this month. Okay, that makes the game a lot more exciting for me. I did not know that it was multiplayer kind of, kind of experience. For me, the tech was so magnificent yeah. that I was thinking there's no way they could they could somehow implement people into this. So that makes it a lot more exciting. I can't wait for August 9th now. Jeez. Yeah, I know, I'm I mean, really excited. And I'm looking forward to, yeah, exactly. Like, we don't even know much about this game still, and it's gone gold. Like, how does the multiplayer work? It could just be, like, Journey, maybe, where you randomly find people when you're traversing planets. That's kind of what I'm some, thinking it's going to happen, is you'll randomly see people. Maybe you'll decide to fight them. Maybe you'll just decide to team up with them for a little bit. Wow. But, but yeah. you know, like, I, that's, that's gonna I, we don't know. Hype, man. That's going to be some shit. The thing I'm scared and, and, about, and though, is that is there going to be enough of a gameplay hook? Is the actual gameplay going to be fun? Yeah. That's that's what I'm scared about. Is like, it going to get boring? Like, you go right. to a couple planets and then they all look the same. Or is it going to be different enough? Is there going to be an incentive to keep going and right. you know finding resources? Like, well, what is the purpose here? It, the, the thing is, the game is made by a virtual skeleton crew. It's like a very small group of people on this development team. And they've been able to build something so phenomenal. Whether or not this game, I hope the game is it has enough of a tail, has enough of a draw, as far as the gameplay hook. Uh, but if it doesn't, this technology is going to be used in some very amazing ways in the future. It's yeah. going. I mean, this whether this game breaks the world as far as you know the, the abilities and things you can do in it and how fun it is uh, remains to be seen. But the game itself and the technology that was created here will change gaming. In the future, yeah. so that's pretty exciting to me. Yeah, right. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully, you know, I can run into Briar. I, I remember from my Destiny days with Briar. You'd see him, he'd wave at you, then he'd proceed to punch you in the back of the head or shoot you or for no reason. Or driving to you with a sparrow and you know knock yeah, you off the map. Uh, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, I do that he'll, to you though. Not yeah, gonna lie. Get, <laughs> if, if you get close to a ledge, Briar will walk over to you and just nudge you off and mm -hmm. look down and start dancing. <laughs> Hammer <laughs> time, you know. Just, Remember yep. the hammer time. Yes. Yep. I'll find you guys in No Man's Sky and uh, kill you both and take your loot. All right. All right. Sounds good. Well, it'll it's be a nice to buy bitch. a yeah, It'll be it. nice to buy a game that I actually actually like. All right. So uh, before the launch of the Wii U, Nintendo had high hopes for the console, as one internal projection claimed that the Wii U would sell over 100 million units. <laughs> yep. They thought it would follow the Wii, basically. Man, they were dead wrong. Like, <laughs> that, didn't even hey, come man, close. <laughs> at least we got to end this, the, the news on a very bright note. I feel like I just watched stand-up comedy here in that. They thought the Wii U was going to do 100 million units. <laughs> yeah, I gotta admit, I'm giggling over <laughs> this, too. Like, wow. They were just so off. How I, many I don't did know they what, sell? Like, six? A are, tenth of that. They're, no, they're, they're, I think they're at, like, 13 million. Yeah. Yeah, around there. And they came out a year before the Xbox One and uh, PlayStation 4. Yeah. So, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a huge, a huge fail that uh, Nintendo did there. Hopefully, things turn around for them in the future. But I hope man, so, man. I really do. I'd love to see Nintendo be a player again. Me too. We all I would. swear, man. I mean, Briar, you know, I know where you're coming from. I feel it deep in my heart. I know how you feel. I was there when you know the day we went and bought Mario three, and I was there when Mario sixty four came out. I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. To see all these amazing games on Nintendo consoles and what they mean to people our age. And sure, Nintendo still makes great games, but they're just a shadow of their former self. I want to see them regain the crown because for many, many years, they were untouchable. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, and, and since PlayStation and Xbox have made the scene, that's been less and less of the case. I, I hate to think that they were only great because it was only them, you know? That's yeah. what it started. It started I don't to know. I think it, was, I, would, I think it was an issue of the leadership was different you know the timing was different the cost of making a the high-end console was much cheaper you know super nintendo launched it like 200 bucks didn't it oh yeah i mean yeah. that was a that was an amazing console like it was just mind-blowing 
Yeah, it was like the graphically though, like the hardware was mind blowing compared to what we had been playing with, and it launched at two hundred bucks. Now it's like Turbo. Uh, I'm trying to remember Super Scope Six. That blew my mind. Oh my god! I think Do you're you the only this? one. <laughs> I have no idea what that even is. That was the bazooka, I might be, right? right? Yeah, the big ass bazooka. <laughs> you shoot the rockets. Yeah. And I was like, this has got to be the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was new technology for the time. Of course, now it looks like holy shit. But back then, I mean, the fact that the matter was the Super Nintendo, which is for you know, as as we know, a gaming console, a cartridge based console, yeah. was somehow able to even do that. You know. But you know, like and, um, what Nintendo has turned into is a is a is a. Ca- or a game maker that just doesn't appeal to me anymore. They don't make it products that I want anymore, right? It's like every once in a while they come out with like a Mario maker that'll really, really get right to my like kind of uh, nostalgia, nostalgia bone. bone. Yeah, right. It's like they'll get right in there <laughs> and start like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the most part, when I see them make new and new games, they're just. You know, they're just not appealing to me anymore. I know the way that the old games were, even if they have the same name on them, you know, it's just not, it's just not the same. So I'd like them, I'd like them to, first of all, get third party developers developing for their new console. I'd like their new console to be powerful. And I think it's not going to be, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be on par (sighs) with the PS4 and the Xbox one when the PS4 and the Xbox one are already moving on. Right. And I think that's that's sad. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what Nintendo can do. I can tell tell you this. I've been enjoying the shit out of Pokemon Go. So it's not like they everybody don't, has. Yeah, it's not like they I don't have, have ideas. Pokemon Go, you don't have not enjoying that, Robbie. It's not available in Canada yet. Oh, there's no Pokemon <laughs> in Canada. They there don't go some. up there. It's too fucking Dude, cold. My Twitter feed <laughs> is Pokemon Go all the time at this point. Oh, it's like everybody's yeah. talking about this game, and it's fun. It's making- my kids came home from camp. They immediately downloaded it. They went outside on their own. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. Getting kids to go outside? Whoa, right? man. I take a walk every morning, and I, I am now looking for Pokemon on my walk. Apparently, there's no That's fucking so Pokemon amazing. in Connecticut. I don't know what's up with Connecticut. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's none in here either because the app is fucking available. So. All right? So yeah. I've been... I You know, it's just... It's such a cool idea. It's, like, clearly... Nintendo has more ideas. This wasn't actually developed by, by Nintendo, but you know, it's like clearly these ideas are still there. Maybe Nintendo really does have to move away from their own platform and just become a software developer. I don't I know. Agree. I don't really care which way they go. I just want them to be, you know, I want that old creativity back that, that we used to see yeah. out of Nintendo. I have to tell you guys, I, mean, all- I honestly don't want Nintendo to make hardware anymore. I just want their games to be on PS4 and Xbox One. That's what I want. Like, I don't want to buy a Nintendo console I, for a couple games. I just don't. That sounds good, but to me, that would just be different. Really, the only old school creator that's at Nintendo is Miyamoto. Um, everybody else is kind of new. They got new management, new leadership. Mm-hmm. But Briar said it's 100% true. When I hear games like Toad, Treasure Tracker, Splatoon, <laughs> when I hear these games, it's like, I just don't want to play them. It doesn't really appeal to me as I've grown old. See, I've grown old well, with a fantastic Nintendo. game. Yeah, I know it is. But like, just looking at it, it just doesn't appeal to me. Mm-hmm. I know I can play it. I've just been playing Plants vs. Zombies, so I know that it's probably a fun game. But when I see other games that appeal to me, I go to those faster. The thing that Nintendo has to understand is this. When it comes to this particular subject, we've all grown old with Nintendo, but Nintendo refused to grow old itself. Yeah, there's no, they they, they don't make content for like a mature gamer, right? Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no God of War or Call of Duty coming out of Nintendo, right? There's nothing with more mature themes and thoughts. It's still very much, you know, like this is about joy and this is about, um, you know, like very simplistic. Yeah, yeah. Which I can respect. And, you know, my kids like Nintendo. They've moved on, even though they don't play their Wii U. They play, you know, they play. Counter Strike on PC, you know they they've already moved off in of Nintendo and they're not looking back. Good choice. Good Nintendo choice. has got see, and even with the younger generation, you just said it there. They're not able to retain anyone. Yeah. People are playing these games and they say, "Okay, I'm done." It's kind of you know. And not my really kids my did not get anymore. hit as hard with Nintendo as I did when I was a kid. When I was Absolutely. a kid, it was prime time Nintendo. All it was is Nintendo. Yeah, n- my kids, you know, grew up in an era where there was. There was some cool Nintendo stuff. Nintendo Super Mario Galaxy was amazing for them. Mm-hmm. 
But there was a lot of other stuff. Lego was big, you know, all sorts of cool stuff. Nintendo Minecraft. did not have a does not have the same hold. Their characters do not have the same hold over them that Nintendo characters had on me when I was their age. Yeah. So I fear going so, forward that they're going to lose that and lose that and lose that until they just lose everything. They've got to 100% change everything about the way they've been doing business. The, the, the only thing they need to keep is creating games that, first of all, work and games that are fun. Yeah. But they've got to open up new doors for people who are playing different types of games. There yeah. is a huge group of people out there who love nothing but first-person shooters. There are people out there who love different types of more mature content. As far as playing video games, there's some people who enjoy shooting people or hitting people and seeing blood fly off their face. Yeah. Nintendo's got to understand, okay, these guys are fucking 40 now. Yeah. We can't well, keep if throwing they can the Mario at least get, at them for everything. Yeah, if they could at least get third parties, if they could create a console that had parity power-wise to the other consoles, and they get third parties to come back to their console, at least... What what Robbie just said wouldn't necessarily apply. I'm not gonna. Robbie just said I'm not gonna buy a Nintendo console for just one or two games again. Yeah. And I don't want to do that either, Robbie. I completely I fucking think agree I've with done you. It too. I swear I, I've, I've definitely done, done it. Too. I did it with the Wii. I did it with I the Wii U. I think I fucking did it with the GameCube. To be honest with yeah. you, because I can't remember more than three or four games I played on the GameCube that I really enjoyed. Exactly. I only have two. Yeah. I've got Resident Evil Four and Smash Brothers Melee. That's yeah. all I have. Years ago, I think I had many many games. I got like four games on the Wii U. I think I got like three games on the Wii. Yeah, yeah my Wii U library is like Mario so Kart this, 8, this, Smash Brothers. That's about it. Like this is a perfect know. example. These those consoles we just mentioned are a perfect example that Nintendo should have done what Microsoft's doing and brought these games to PC so people could save their damn money. We're spending more money on the consoles than we do for the games through the entire lifetime of the console. Or if that's, you know, if they yeah. would, if they would get away from this like niche little like console development thing where you know it's always got to be like you know it's got the movement controllers or it's got the tablet or you know whatever their little thing is like that controller for the gamecube you know if it was easier for companies to port games over you know if they're developing for three consoles instead of just two and nintendo was in there then it'd be easier to make that decision yeah i'm gonna buy a nintendo console because i'm gonna get all the games i love from third parties like destiny like call of duty but I'm also going to get the Nintendo stuff, you know? And I don't have to learn how to play it all over again. That's one another thing about Nintendo consoles. When games, third parties are ported to Nintendo's consoles, you got to learn how to play it in a different way. You do. Yeah. You know? You don't yeah, have the, the traditional means. Yeah. They're, 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 they're kind of awkward. I see Carson say and, it's some older Nintendo games still hold me, like Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64. And I agree, Carson. It's the old stuff that here. holds me. It's the new stuff they can't... Uh, I've Can't matured in, Nintendo but... games have not, and they don't have the same charm. I would say the the only game on the Wii U that really stuck with me is Super Mario Maker. And that's because, again, it hits that nostalgia bone so hard. And, and see, that's the game I haven't played on the Wii U that you keep telling me i got to get. The game on the, the Wii U that probably hit me the hardest isn't even Smash Brothers. It's Bayonetta 2 because it was just fun and something so different. Mm -hmm. And it just felt good on the console. But the, the, I know those experiences exist. But for me, they're just so few and far between, and I just don't see the value of buying these particular style of games when other more realistic and games that really appeal to me more exist on other consoles. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's my story, and I'm going to stick with it today. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. Cat, you are so bloody noisy. Just calm down. Jesus. You don't know how to deal with pussy, man. Um, all right. I'm so learning. I'm learning. All right. <laughs> You'll get it figured out. I've, I've had some experience, bitch. That was a good one. <laughs> Old man gaming. <laughs> Old man gaming. Damn right. Uh, all right. Is that it? Is that all we got for this week? That's it, man. That's yep, it just for the, the pussy. This week. Man, I got to learn how to do that. <laughs> hey, Robbie, you must be a pimp, man, because the pussy just opens up the door behind you and comes in the room. Damn. Yeah. So I'm doing the show. It stays away. Like it, you know? Yeah. All right, yeah, let's wrap this one up before we have any more cat noises. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beasley, what are you up to this week? 
uh, I'm going to be re- I got a lot of videos going up. I'm going to be releasing a video asking my subscribers what game I need to be completing next. In the meantime, I haven't made any commitments. I'm going to play some more Cell Damage HD, which is a very fun game that my wife and I probably spent a good hour or two today playing. Uh, and I do want to play a little bit more Plants vs. Zombies. I haven't made any strong commitments. I don't think I want to play Turtles anymore. Uh, just for the first 30 minutes, it pissed me off so bad. I'm not kidding, Briar. It was really that bad. It was. It's horrible. Yeah, uh, I know. And, I read the reviews. Yeah. <laughs> Which came yeah, out like sucks. a month ago. Well before sucks. you yeah. purchased the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I stayed, away, look, I stayed away from the reviews of the game, but I did hear, you know, through, through you know, little birdies that it wasn't that great, but I'm a huge fan of Platinum Games, you know, because Bayonetta 2 is my favorite game in 2014. So I was like, could it? I love Turtles. I'm one of the original Turtles fans. I'm going to shit my pants when they actually made a Turtles movie. Domino's Pizza everywhere. I remember these the, the feeling of that. And so I was like, can it really be that bad? I'm a huge Turtles fan. And I put the game in, and I was like, first of all, Leonardo is Raphael now? Yeah, they gave Leonardo Raphael's personality. I was like, what the fuck's going on? And then when that you play weird. the game, wow. you play the game, it's just, it is rinse and repeat bullshit. I've had uh, at least you fun. got a new Ninja Turtles movie to look forward to. Oh, get out of here. I want to see that crap. <laughs> That's even worse. Please. <laughs> you know, I don't want to talk about Michael Bay, okay? We're all fucked, it. Beasley. We're all We're fucked. We're all fucked. America's just... I'm fucked, too. You're fucked. We're fucked. Uh... <laughs> For people who don't know who didn't get the chance to see the pre-show... Celine Dion and JC. We're fucked. <laughs> Briar and I are writing a new song called America, We're Fucked. And hopefully it gets picked up. <laughs> Yeah. By Celine Dion with the little rap portions done by the, the great man Jay Z. So that's right. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Robbie, what but, are you up to this week? Uh probably back to work this week. And uh as soon as this podcast is over too, I'm gonna go play more Red Dead Redemption because nice. God, I missed that game so much. It's such a good I'm game. Really playing the shit of it. Wonderful it's such game. A good game. Yeah. The shitty ending hits me right in the feels still. Like I just beat it last night and I was like Oh, I was sad to see that again. I'm not going to spoil it for people who have played Red Dead Redemption because if this is your first time, absolutely go buy it. Like, yeah, 750. 750. Amazing Jesus game. Christ. You have to. That's amazing. All right. Awesome uh, what are you going to do, prior? What's that? What am I going to be up to? Uh, I got to do a lot of Destiny. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be streaming in the afternoon. I pretty much just started streaming like every day in the afternoon uh, during the week. And then uh, on the weekends, kind of when I have time because weekends are a little more busy for me. I'll be um, there, Briar. I got a Sharded or Keep It episode hopefully coming out next early next week, which should be good. Uh, I think it's going to surprise people because I think it's going to come out of the blue. Uh, and that's basically it. Play a little now, more on Sharded 4. I'm looking forward to that. Do you have, Briar, you have more than one physical copy of, of uh, Destiny? I have Xbox One and uh, PlayStation 4. Didn't you buy PlayStation 4's version twice? Uh... You got to look. <laughs> you I did. I did. You know what I did? Because I, I bought a second PlayStation, and I wanted to be able to play with my kids um, who played once with me and never did again. <laughs> so I bought the – I have the, I have the like, disc copy and the digital copy, which I'm happy about because I just use the digital copy now all the time, so I don't have to go find the disc. You, can, you know you can use a digital copy on both consoles, correct? You didn't yeah. need to buy – you didn't need to buy the, the disc version. It's very, very easy to do. The console that you play on the most. I could play them together, though. Yes, you can. Oh, really? Well, that's probably cheating. <laughs> no, it's not. No? Okay. No, it's not. Absolutely right. not. This is how sorry. All right, that's going to go. That's going to do it. Before we get into piracy, <laughs> we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, no, it's, 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 it's Sony's yeah. game share. You're allowed to have two consoles, a primary and a secondary. Oh, okay. The primary. The primary is where everybody can sign in, and that's your primary system. But your secondary is the one only that you can sign in on. See, and I couldn't do can... it because we c- we are all on the same live account. I can't remember. I can't remember the details of it. If you want to find out how to do it, give me a call, and I'll walk you through it. It's no I piracy. I involved. sold the other PlayStation, so it's kind oh, of a yeah. move. <laughs> yeah, I sold the other PlayStation. You're a mover and shaker there. Just saying, before we get into more. Uh... Piracy Shit's news today. Yeah, more piracy. We don't want another CSGO. <laughs> did, did you go back to IRC? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I haven't heard that shit in years, IRC. <laughs> oh, thank you guys so much for watching. We yeah, have so thanks much for fun hanging out, guys. Show. 
It's so awesome to be here. Thank you, everybody, for supporting this man on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, and it's an honor and a privilege to be here every week with you guys. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, we guys. See you later. Bye, everybody. Kuna Matata, bitches. <laughs>